All right. Welcome to this training on Lifter LMS in Gutenberg. I'm Chris Badgett, joined with, with my business partner, Thomas Levy. And I'm just going to get my screen shared here. And we're going to get started. Excellent. So we are talking about Lifter LMS and Gutenberg, which is a new editor for WordPress, which is rolling out in WordPress 5.0. And uh, you're going to learn about what that new editor is, what it's all about. You're going to discover how Lifter LMS is not just merely Gutenberg compatible, but we're embracing it and adding a lot of other benefits for the course creator, the website builder, specifically who are building WordPress LMS websites. So for this training, it's really important that you all ask uh, lots of questions. We've got a Q&A feature here in Zoom. Also, there is the chat, and you'll be able to raise your hand and ask questions live uh, at the end when we do the Q&A if you want to do that. There's a little raise your hand feature in Zoom as well. Um, and we're also going to be giving away one surprise bonus at the end of this presentation. So stick around to the end. We'll, we'll randomly draw from the people who are here at the end. And uh, we've got a prize coming for one lucky winner. Um, so this is being recorded. If you want to watch it again, you're going to get a, a replay video that will get emailed to you. Um, and this is also streaming into the Lift LMS Facebook group which you can join. There's a link in the chat right now if you're not already in there to join our community, which is a, a thriving community and conversation around Lifter LMS and these types of projects. So if you're not in there yet, please join. So the format of how I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna cover some quick high level, you know, reporting, reporter style stuff of what Gutenberg is and when it's coming out and why it's important and all that. But the majority of this presentation is going to be, I'm actually going to be sharing a live website that has Gutenberg and Lifter LMS installed together and show you how they work together in its current form. So we've got a few quick slides here, then we'll get into the live presentation, and then uh, we're going to get into the Q&A with myself and Thomas here. So what is you know, what is Gutenberg and WordPress 5.0? Like, what does this even mean? If you're new here, um, if you're like, if you're inside the WordPress community, you've probably been hearing about this for a while, but if you're not really focused on WordPress and you're focused on growing your online course business and your membership site, you may not have even heard of it yet. So just to give you the high level of what it's all about is Gutenberg is the major feature rolling out in WordPress 5.0 which is essentially a new editor for WordPress. If you can see my screen right now, you can see what Gutenberg looks, looks like just, and we'll, we'll demo this live, but this is very different from the um, visual editor, the tiny MC editor that's been the same with WordPress for a very long time, which um, those of you know, it just looks like kind of that editor tool that you use to, write an email or publish a blog post. You know, we recognize the familiar like bold italics and all that kind of stuff. That's the old editor. Gutenberg is the new editor. That's the new fe the major new feature um, that's coming in WordPress 5.0. It's been in development for quite some time. And uh, plugins and themes, um, it's important in the WordPress community to, for them to adapt to Gutenberg and uh, move forward with WordPress 5.0. The goal of Gutenberg is to make building websites and you know doing custom layouts and really giving you a what you see is what you get kind of building experience, making that better. Um, for people that have been using WordPress for a long time, it's gonna be an adjustment, you know? It's like, a, that's why this is a 5.0. It's a major, update. Um, for people that like happen to just come over to WordPress or just start in the WordPress LMS industry building their online course website after this rolls out, they, they, there won't even be an adjustment. They'll just walk in and start using this and it should, it'll be just even easier for them in that way. So 
uh, who is behind all this stuff? So WordPress, the core software that we download or that's included in our hosting, um, I, Thomas, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like it's the WordPress foundation that's behind the, the, the open source WordPress software. Um, uh, I don't know if foundation is really like the, the right uh, or is name, it? but yeah, it's, it's the, I mean, Automatic owns WordPress, right? But mm -hmm. um, Gutenberg is rolling into the WordPress core. Uh, it's being primarily developed by WordPress core contributors. A lot of those work for Automatic, but, um, you know, some are just random community members. Um, yeah, and this is this whole like open source software thing is one of the things that makes the WordPress as an option self hosted for a website or self hosted LMS so powerful is there's this giant community of people who contribute to the core, work on the project, um, companies like Lifter LMS that uh, bring additional functionality to the um, to what you can do. So that's that's what it's all about. So this is an update. Who's behind this? WordPress is behind this. And then Lifter LMS as a plugin or suite of tools that you use to um, extend your website to not just be for publishing posts and pages and creating a, you know, a brochure website to actually be a web application or a WordPress based learning management system. So WordPress is behind it. And then we're also behind adapting with this new system to give you to be compatible and also give you more power. And then why why are, why are they doing this it's going to make it easier to build websites the <clears throat> i always joke like the um if you're in tech for a while you hear this uh this concept called the WYSIWYG editor what you see is what you get which is you know when we write a blog post or content for a page on our website in the back end of wordpress what you see back there is not actually what you get uh, it's not necessarily a clear representation of what happens on the front end of a website. This is going to make that process closer to reality of what you see is going to be a lot closer to what you get. And the experience is designed to make, you know, non make it easier for non-technical people both to build what they want with all these neat features and um, allow plugins and themes to add more you know, options to the process. And I think the um, success we see in the WordPress page building community with tools like Beaver Builder, um, Elementor, the Divi Builder, it's clear that that's what people want. They want it to be easier to, you know, see what it is they're building as they build it and also have the ability to customize the layouts to whatever they're imagining in their head without having to be a web developer or know how to write code. So that's, that's why this is coming. And for Lifter LMS specifically, you know, these building blocks of what makes up a course, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, um, you can start customizing the layout of each course, at, you know, to whatever you want to do. If you don't, if you want to use certain pieces or reorder how it works out of the box, you can do that. Um, and we'll get into that. That'll make more sense when we do the live demo. Uh, in a little bit. So where is it? Like where is Gutenberg? It's the new page and post editor and you'll see it in the Lifter LMS editor areas like on the course. Uh, in the back end of WordPress when you go to the course page you're, you're gonna see it and we'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So when is it happening? This is the million dollar question. The reason this webinar is today is because a little bit ago it was actually scheduled uh, WordPress 5.0 is scheduled to roll out today. Uh, I don't believe that's happening. I'm not sure if there's been an official announcement of when it's going to roll out or not, uh, or when it, when it will in fact roll out. So we'll definitely keep you posted when. No official release date as of this morning. There is not one. Yeah. Not, not, not that I've been able to locate. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, uh, we'll, we'll find out and that's okay. You know, sometimes in uh, software, there's a balance between shipping and getting things rolled out, but also making sure it's in good condition to roll out, especially an update of this magnitude that's going to affect, um, you know, 30% of the internet or whatever the WordPress share is. We're, we're probably looking at a mid to late January re release though. That's the uh, kind of the estimated timeline that has been thrown around. That's not official, but that's what I've been finding in Slack and, and so on. So, Yeah. So it's coming. Um, and it's important to get ready for it um, 
because it is a big change and to get ready for any change, the best way, the best tools you have is to educate yourself, which is the function of this webinar to get you up to speed. Um, so how does it work? We're going to take a look. I'm going to, I'm going to start the screen share in just a moment. And, um, and what, what if you don't, this is just a what if question. What if you don't, if you just kind of sit back and wait for it to roll out, um, in this case, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I think the best thing would be to educate yourself in advance of the rollout. Um, you can already start using Gutenberg on your website uh, now, which for me, the first time I used Gutenberg, I just used it to make a, paste in a, a page, some content for a web page, and I found it really easy and actually fun to use. Um, so we'll get into that in a, in a, in a minute, but Definitely, this is one of those things where it's important to start playing with it um, soon, just so you're ready. So I'm going to... If I could, Chris, I would yeah. also just emphasize that there are a lot of plugins. Mm -hmm. We cannot guarantee that installing Gutenberg isn't going to mess up a plugin uh, that yeah. we're not aware of. Staging sites are really important. It's extremely easy to have a staging site nowadays. If your host doesn't provide you one, you might want to consider moving to a host that does provide you one. And always test and staging first. Please don't submit support tickets that said, Chris said to install Gutenberg. I did, and now everything is on fire. Yeah. Um, please use staging first. Please. Yeah. Thank you for the public service announcement, Thomas. <laughs> um, and it's also like, uh, this is going to be a process more than an event. So as Gutenberg rolls out, um, as Lifter adds more and more features related to it, it's just gonna evolve over time. So uh, I would just look at it as like a, a process and to you know just engage with it. And if you have feedback on it or how it's working and what you need to communicate about that. So I'm gonna share this site over here and I'm going to, um, and then uh, keep the questions coming. I can see some questions starting to come into the Q and A box. So uh, keep, keep them coming. So this is just a basic uh, Lifter LMS sample site, nothing fancy here, just to kind of demo the basics of Gutenberg. Um, so I'm gonna go into the back end here. And you can see this area here um, looks different. And before I really get into that, I just want to, before we get into lifter land, let's just add a page and look at it without talking about WordPress LMS. Just get really simple here. So this is the new editor. Um, it's not the, the WYSIWYG area that we were um, used to seeing. So it's assuming, you know, WordPress was originally set up as a blogging platform. So, the little prompt here is to start with the title of the blog post and you either just start writing content, but really the magic starts happening um, up here in the, uh, the plus button there. So there's this concept of blocks where we can start adding blocks to our content here. We can, you know, add an image. Uh, so this starts looking different than what we're, what we're used to doing. We can add another paragraph area down here. Um, we can add, you know, a gallery of images. There's this common blocks area where you can have headings, audios, quotes, lists. These are the bullet points. I'm honestly not sure what cover is, file, video. There's formatting stuff where we can insert code. We can uh, add the classic editor that we're used to. We can do custom HTML, uh, pull quotes, tables, verses. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff. We can even bring in our widgets um, <clears throat> that exist into this layout. And somewhere in there, we can introduce columns. Look at all these embeds in here. Um, you can embed stuff from Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, WordPress.com, SoundCloud, Spotify, Flickr, Vimeo, Animoto. Um, 
We just did a podcast interview with the CEO of this company. So just if you're not subscribed to the LMS cast podcast, I would, we'll put a link in the chat, check that out. It was a really great interview, but a uh, small tangent there. Cloud up. I'm not sure what that is. College humor, daily motion, funny or die, Hulu, Imgur, Isu, Kickstarter, meetup.com, Mixcloud, Photobucket, Poll Daddy, Reddit, Reverb Nation, Screencast, Scribd, SlideShare, Smug Mug, Speaker Deck, TED, Tumblr, Video Press, WordPress TV. Wow, that's a lot of neat embed stuff. Um, if you're wanting to make training content for your course that is multimedia, I mean, think about all the options that this, you know, is trying to make easier for you to get inside your content. Um, so uh, this area over here, the document that you see over here, this is what we were used to kind of seeing on the side and, and, and below um, in, the old, in the regular WordPress that we're used to, like the featured image area, you know, what do you want the permalink to be? Uh, do you want to allow comments? Um, you know, the, the page attributes, these are all things we're kind of used to seeing, uh, in the, in the, you know, technical terms, I believe they're called meta boxes. And then some of these things have their own settings. So, um, if we, uh, well, this is a, this is a lifter setting, but uh, we'll, we'll get into the, some of the settings on more of the lifter stuff. Pa paragraphs have a lot of settings that you can demo. Oh, okay. Let's see. So here's a paragraph. There we go. And then the block. So you can see over here, <clears throat> we can do a background color on this block. We can change the text color. Excuse me while I take my uh, eye protection off. <laughs> um, there we go. Now I can see. Um, you know, you can do drop caps. You know, that thing where the first letter is, is big, kind of an old school typography thing. You can change font sizes. Uh, if you've worked with page builders, like Beaver Builder, Elementor, Divi Builder, this is gonna look kind of familiar as like kind of a basic page builder. But the idea here is you have these blocks and then you have these uh, settings that go with these individual blocks. And Lifter over here also, um, you know, has a lot of options. If you open up this side thing here, um, let's see, you could like um, switch to like the code editor or whatever. There's, there's just different, different options around that. So that's kind of just the basics. Um, if you go, let me just get back out of here. Um, if we go to the, uh, your WordPress dashboard right now, this is what Thomas was talking about. Try this in staging. Um, this is where this big giant pop-up on your home screen of WordPress is, uh, like at 4.9, whatever, wherever we're at, this is allowing you to try Gutenberg as a plugin. Um, and just test it out in staging. So you can start, I would definitely recommend doing that in your staging environment and just getting ready for it. So that's how you can test it out before it actually comes. So let's take a look at courses. Um, I've got this yoga course over here that we were looking at on the front end. I'm gonna switch it back to the visual editor. And I hid the, uh, the, the sidebar, the WordPress sidebar over here. Um, that's somewhere in the settings over here. It's called you're, you're full, in, yeah. full screen mode. So these are things just to play around with. I think once you click on my experience, at least as a WordPress user, who's been doing it for a while, is that once I kind of clicked around, it was pretty intuitive. It is new though. So there is a learning curve and I recommend you um, playing around with it. So let's just, just as a reminder here, let's look on the front end. You know, this is the regular course with, you know, um, we've got our access plans, the course uh, information here, the course description, 
Um, the syllabus is down below. And if we look at that back here, you can see like, here's our title. Uh, um, there's all the, over here on the side, you know, the Lift LMS uh, featured image for the course uses a standard WordPress featured image thing. So you can see that right there. We can launch the course builder right here and jump on into our familiar, you know, Lifter LMS course building um, experience right here. <clears throat> and then we can quickly jump back. Save the changes there. We can jump back to the uh, the WordPress page for the course, which has all the settings and in Gutenberg land, all these blocks that we can start building. So let me draw your attention over here. Um, you can see now, if you wanna build a custom layout for your course, uh, we've got these pieces that you know you can put in there. So um, I'll build a, a new course from scratch and we can kind of look at that, but this is like where this whole block building concept starts. There's different pieces or blocks that make up a course in Lifter LMS. We've got titles, course description, course information, access plans, progress bar, continue button. You see all these blocks. These are what these look like over here. And then um, when we click on them, you can see over here, we have a lot of settings that we can work with. So um, we could make the, the, um, the course information. Um, we can change the title heading. Uh, we can add our estimated completion time. We can hide certain elements if we don't want them to display, like the course categories, for example, we're displaying there um and so on and then for example there's some other really cool features like right here this is the course syllabus i know some people are um very uh protective of their um um of their syllabus they don't really want that why is it doing that um Stop that. <laughs> there we go. They don't really all, want all the all the links are live. So um oh, a, I see. Little, it's a little it's a bug. We're not live yet, but yeah. um it, it's showing the exact same thing you show on the front end. I need to modify it a little bit so the, the links are um like open in a new tab. Gotcha. Um, you can like click through. It's all live code. So that's so what you clicking on a link. That's what it is. Thank you. <laughs> um so uh if you wanted, let's say your syllabus to only be visible to enrolled students. This is a really cool lifter feature where you're only gonna be able to see this syllabus on the course homepage to enrolled users. And it could be enrolled users in this course, any course, um, in any of the selected courses or memberships where we could start you know, getting really fancy with our visibility roles. So uh, that's pretty cool you know, for if you have like more advanced, like kind of membership restriction access rules that you want to set up on visibility, um, that's there. So that's, that's super cool. Um, let's go build a course from scratch so you can kind of see what that's like. Um, just kind of starting fresh. So if we add a new course, Um, we'll just do a business course here and then uh, you can see we've got some of the stuff is here um, we, we, we've got the basic layout here but you know some people they may want the the progress thing like way up high let's see can I move that now I was moving it earlier you can't go above the title, but you can go above that first paragraph. Oh, right in here. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. Try, try. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, there you go. There it is. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, I think I did actually just moved the access plans, which we haven't created yet. But um, 
Yeah. So things are, this gets into custom layout. Like you may have a different idea of the, than the stock lifter layout of like what order you want to present certain things. So you can also remove any of it too. That's one of our most frequent feature requests is how to remove things. Like people don't want to display course information at all. For example, um, you can just hit the little trash button and get rid of the, the element you don't want. Do you want to mention what add to reusable blocks means, Thomas? I'm just looking at the interface here. Yeah, I actually haven't played with it at all. Um, that's not a lifter LMS feature. That's just part of Gutenberg. But um, I believe if you like customize a block, um, I don't know, let's say you have like an introductory paragraph that you want on all your blog posts or, or I, I believe maybe like a, a common use case might be like um, the content upsell uh, or is that what they call uh, content upgrade or something like that in your blog posts. Um, so maybe you have a block where, you know, you have a download link or an opt in to an email list or I don't know, something like that. Um, I don't think that really makes sense with something like access plans because um, yeah. they're not that customizable and they're pretty, pretty, pretty much, um, already reusable you know what I mean but something with that you might highly customize you can um, we'll, we'll, we'll be familiar with that from page builders beaver builder elementor things like that they have um uh, I forget what they call them in, in those off the top of my head they all they're they're like awesome. global rows or something yeah like a global yeah. row or something like that um, I, I believe it's it's something very similar to that I, I personally haven't actually created a reusable block yet um, it's not relevant for what I've been working on but um, I don't know you can experiment with it right now I'm sure it'll work if you want to yeah. So, sorry, I know I'm, I should be an authority on this, but there's so much content in this release and I'm like yeah. kind of hyper focused on, on building blocks for Lifter LMS and making sure all the Lifter LMS stuff works that that's like an area that I'm just like, I, I don't need to worry about that right now and I'll figure it out when, when I need to. Yeah, that's great. Um, progress bar, you know, you may only want to show that to enrolled people. That kind of makes sense. Like to put it, I mean, people can see a zero progress Bar, or you could just hide it all together and simplify the layout. Um, so some of this stuff in Lifter is now over here. And um, some of it, these meta boxes are down here. Like, so for example, no access uh, plans are found here. So we can create a new one, one-time payment. thousand dollars expires after one year publish that and you can see we're you know starting to build our course here we don't, we don't have a lot of content in it but so that's there And now here in the, you know, the Gutenberg editor, we can see what's going on. We can launch the course builder and start really building out, you know, our syllabus and, you know, start editing everything. And you'll see once we get back, in the, uh, the WordPress editor of the course, you know, our syllabus is starting to populate down there. So that's, is there anything else there? We're, you're going to see some lifter settings up in here, this little guy up here. Um, but that's kind of a quick overview of what's coming in Gutenberg by itself and what that means to Lifter. So I'd love to get questions from everybody um, and we'll start answering that. And if anybody wants to talk live, feel free to raise your hand. Chris, we've got a bunch of text questions that have come in. Do you want to take those first? Sure. Q&A or chat? Uh, in the Q and A, there's I think there's a couple in chat too, but let's do the um. Yeah. So Robert says I will still um, 
he's going to stick around to the end, but he's wondering if anything that is working now on my site is going to still work when Gutenberg starts. Um, I think that's just that question of you should be testing it in your staging environment. And it depends on what you have for um, plugins and theme. So you really need to be testing it. But the goal, nobody's goal is to break your website um, or make things stop working. But it is really important during this major transition to be involved in actively testing your site in a staging environment. So, so I, I, I think there's been a tremendous amount of fear mongering going around with this release. Um, yeah. Nobody's website is going to explode. Yeah. That, that said, with any major change, uh, like I said in that little public service amount earlier, like always test your stuff. Um, as a website owner, it is your responsibility to ensure your stuff works. Um, and that's, you know, use best practices, test and staging first, make sure everything works. If you have an e-commerce site, make sure your checkout doesn't break, so on and so forth. If you have a Lifter LMS website, make sure your checkout doesn't break. Um, but in, in general, not a lot is actually changing. Um, you know, the, the, the big effect on most plugins and themes will be the way meta boxes work. Um, and the Gutenberg core team has done an incredible job making sure that Metaboxes just continue to work after Gutenberg is updated. Um, really, it's just a user experience change. Uh, you as a course creator, a content creator, a blogger, whatever, uh, are going to have a different experience of creating your content. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're relatively technically savvy, um, and you probably are since you own a website, um, or you're, you're managing a website or something like that. It's going to be a, a transition, um, but you know, you're going to get it. It's pretty intuitive. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, in general, things are going to continue working, but that is such a complicated question. Um, you know, like as, as somebody who does loads of support every day, I can't just say, yes, you're going to be fine. Uh, because if I say that, then I might go on record making a huge gross uh, oversimplification of the question. So uh, test your things. And you, you know, when you see problems, uh, in, in general, like we're, we're part of a community here, uh, us at Lifter LMS, um, you as members of the WordPress community using WordPress websites. Um, and it's, it's huge, you know what I mean? There's, there's hundreds and thousands of plugins and themes and uh, everything needs to work together flawlessly. And that's really hard to do. So um, the, the best thing you could do, honestly, is install it in staging and test things out. And when you see issues, contact the developers of those plugins. If it's a Lifter LMS issue, contact us. Um, you know, if it's your theme, contact your theme developers. Um, and uh, somebody, and like everybody wants you to continue using their plugins and themes, so they're gonna they're gonna be working on this. Um, and you know, I, I I mean, I've been working with a lot of other plugins, and in general, I don't see any problems with Gutenberg, any major problems. Um, that said, I'm working with, you know, the advanced betas and things like that. So I, I am seeing minor issues here and there, but everybody's working really hard to clean all that stuff up. So you're probably going to be okay. Um, I, I just like, I just, I've seen a lot of people saying like, oh, everything's going to explode and Gutenberg's going to break the internet and things like that. And it's just, that's just not a reality. You know, um, it's just not that scary. Um, and, and I think in general, like this matters a lot to insiders like us that are like working on WordPress stuff. But I think most people are going to update. They're going to see Gutenberg and they're going to be like, oh, it changed. Okay, and carry on. So, I don't know. Don't be scared. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we've, uh, we've been a, in uh, just dealing with change is an issue. So, this is a moment where you have to deal with change. And how you deal with change is important. And the way we look at it at Lifter LMS is our philosophy is um, – if we want a predictive future, we're just gonna help create it. So this is one of the great things about working with Thomas. He's an amazing developer. Even though Gutenberg documentation is light, as Thomas likes to say, the code is the documentation. So we're just moving ahead, making things work, uh, you know, just kind of forging ahead. There's no reason to be scared. Um, just, just follow best practices when you, just like any other update. And, I think as a, just as a recommendation, I've noticed in my WordPress journey, I'm not a developer. I'm a, what you would consider a WordPress power user. Um, I noticed that over time, as you get better and better at WordPress, you use less and less plugins, even if you're not a developer. So this might be a good time to just take a more minimalist approach to plugins. If you're not using something, get rid of it. If it hasn't been updated in two years, you might want to question if that's critical for your business or not. So that's just some general advice right there. 
So the next question is, how is Lifter LMS, Gutenberg, and Page Builders going to work together? I would recommend asking Elementor, Beaver Builder, and Divi that question. Um, in some ways, this Gutenberg, like we're looking at with Lifter, it is a page builder. So this is like a, <clears throat> it's giving the power of page builders in a way like to create a custom layout and do like these like kind of module or block based building to everybody. That being said, it's not as, it's different from, um, or, and it's not as evolved as a page builder as, you know, a beaver builder or element or a Divi. So, I've seen, I know uh, Elementor I saw had a video about how they are going to be um, integrating with Gutenberg. But um, my understanding from Matt Mullenweg is that the, the leader behind WordPress or the founder is that his goal with page builders and Gutenberg is that they share a common, they, they basically build on top of Gutenberg through a common API. So that's where he's hoping it'll go, but I can't really speak for the page builders. The page builders and Lifter right now, they, people are already doing amazing things with them. Um, just using, you know, the page builder with Lifter. Do you have any other comments on that, Tom? Yeah, and, and I think essentially uh, Gutenberg replaces the editor, page builders replace the editor. Um, if you're already using a page builder, you go to your, your, your edit course screen, your edit post screen, whatever. Um, and then you open up your page builder and that's how you create your content instead of just typing into a little witty, wizzy wig box. Um, and I, my, my experience has been is that that is going to continue working with the page builders. Um, there's not really a question of lifter LMS in, in that. Um, so, I mean, if you're already using Lifter LMS with a page builder, you can continue using Lifter LMS with a page builder and Gutenberg probably doesn't matter to you. Um, in, 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 you know, uh, the most simplified version of that, that question. So, um, and, but again, you know, like Chris said, you know, reach out to the, the page builders um, and, and see, you know, what their, their thoughts and concerns and, and recommendations on that kind of stuff are. So. Thank you for the question. Um, so another question is, have we tested it with WP Fusion? I talked to Jack this morning. I'm going to cut you off, Chris. Yeah. Um, this is, again, another question where Lifter LMS plus Gutenberg plus WP Fusion is not the question you should be asking. The question is WP Fusion plus Gutenberg. Um, I, anyway, I, I talked to Jack from, from Very Good Plugins, the lead developer owner of WP Fusion this morning. Um, he said that they're ready to go with Gutenberg, um, which means you're ready to go with Gutenberg and Lifter LMS and WP Fusion. Uh, but again, if you're seeing specific issues there, you're going to want to reach out to WP Fusion and ask them about it. Awesome. Um, and if you're a developer, like if you're building products that work with Lifter, uh, that, that do other things as well, come join the Lifter LMS Slack community. We'll put a, uh, a link down below on where to join that. Um, Jack from WP Fusion has been over there having conversations with us. It's a great place to be if you're a, a developer in this industry. Um, so Bill is asking, so do we have to update all our plugins? That's kind of a general question. Um, yes. As a, as a general rule, yeah. Like if you go through an update process, <laughs> you, there's WordPress, there's plugins, there's themes, um, so that's it. And um, you know, you always wanna like test things in a staging environment um, just to make sure that everything updates well, but especially in a major release like this, like WordPress 5.0, um, I, you know, I would be looking to pretty much take the opportunity to back everything up, test everything in staging, and then to update everything across the board if everything goes, you know, according to plan. Do you have any other words of wisdom there, Thomas? No, I, I yeah, I mean, it, 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 I, I, think, um, I think there is maybe a tendency still to not update things for fear of things breaking. Um, but I, I think, I think the, the, the more you adhere to that rule, the more complicated an update process is. Um, if, if you update things weekly and are always testing and staging, 
uh, updating things becomes much less scary because it's much more incremental. Uh, but you know, if you if you haven't updated Lifter LMS since 2.5, you're now like going on two years worth of missed updates and changes and things like yeah. that. You know, so um, the the process becomes more overwhelming and more complicated and more difficult. So um, I, I think just doing incremental updates, keeping things up to date as closely as possible, and that really comes down to having good testing practices. You know, um, I think we've done a webinar on. Uh, have we done a webinar on staging sites? No, I, but I, we I, have I've a really a couple, great piece of documentation, a guide. Yeah. We'll put a link in the chat to that. Um, if it's not clear, I'm, I'm a huge advocate on, on, on good testing practices. So uh, I, I've done a couple of WordCamp talks on, on testing. You can probably find those on WordCamp.tv uh, or sorry, WordPress.tv. Uh, yeah, and we've got some documentation and things like that. But it, it's just, uh, if, if you have a good testing practices, the question of updating your plugins isn't really a question. Um, you know, uh, there's lots of great services. Our, our, our buddy um, at uh, Staging Pilot, um, makes it so you can actually kind of automate all this by running automated tests on checkout and Lifter LMS stuff like um, enrollment and Lifter LMS checkout, WooCommerce checkout. Um, and then you can kind of ensure that updating your stuff doesn't break and you can automate that or you can just do it manually. We do it manually at LifterLMS.com. Um, anyway, it's just, there, there's a lot of cool things. Kathy just dropped some, some links that you can check out about how to stage, but um, keep your stuff updated. Your themes, your plugins, your WordPress core. And on this topic of updates, the, um, that webinar that Thomas mentioned with Nathan Tyler from Staging Pilot, we did a training with him. We'll put a link in the chat. Go watch that. Check that out. That's a, that's a good tool. And just another note is um, I was talking with some hosting companies at various WordCamps and things. Um, I think it's important that you know if your web host is going to automatically update WordPress for you or if you need to do that. Like you should know, you should educate yourself by contacting your hosting company just so you know, is Gutenberg or 5.0 just going to show up one day or do you have the option to like sit back, wait a little bit and then update when ready? Um, but I think you should know that answer and not be surprised by which, which way it goes. Um, the next question is, <coughs> um, it's about page builders. You can style in your page builder and paste the short code in the block. Jonathan's question is, will Lifter LMS see the short code like gravity form short, short code inside of Elementor short code and let the Lifter LMS gravity form add on see the form and allow the lesson to not complete until filled out? I have no idea. Uh, we might have to take that one live. <laughs> Um, no, I, I, I understand the question. Yeah. I don't have an answer to that because that's like three levels deep. Um, I, I, it, theoretically, it should work, but that's really an Elementor question. It really doesn't have much to do with Gutenberg, I don't think. Um, so the, the, the way the lifter element, I mean, the, the way lifter LMS gravity forms works is it, it, it looks through the content of your post to determine if you have that short code in there. If a form um, is present. Yeah. If a form is present and the, the, the way, um, Elementor, Beaver Builder, Divi, et cetera, work is that they, they actually save all this content into, um, technically it, it doesn't always get saved directly to your database, but the, the method we use does pick it up inside Elementor. The method we use does pick it up inside Gutenberg. I believe it should work. If I'm talking out of turn, I, I haven't actually physically run this test. So if it's not working, could you lodge a support ticket and I'll take a look at it um, and we'll try to figure out like what's going on there, but it, it should work theoretically. Thanks for the question, the current John. editor, but not in Gutenberg. Uh, well, okay. I'll take a look at it. Uh, I'll take a look. So you're not talking about using it with Elementor. You're talking about using it with Gutenberg. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll take a look at it then. Um, maybe don't worry about a support ticket. I'll just, I'll throw it in GitHub right now. And, um, I'll make, make sure to take a look at that, uh, in the next couple of weeks before we get this released. Nassim asks in the course editor, where is the sidebar? Um, so in the, the demo I was doing, <clears throat> let me uh, share my screen here. Um, in this case, we're using the Launchpad theme. So this has a, you know, I could select a right sidebar layout and then I would go over to Appearance um, Widgets and you can see over here in Lifter LMS world, 
we have these sidebar widgets, course progress, course syllabus, um, which we have put inside of the uh, course sidebar if it is there or the lesson sidebar if it is not, if it is there. So it's kind of a theme level question. So, but the reason you can't see the sidebar in this image is because in this current form, the sidebar is managed separately through the theme and the widgets. I hope that makes sense. Um, Peter asks, is Lifter LMS giving support for Gutenberg for now until the official release? You wanna take that one, Thomas? Uh, yeah, I mean, so uh, we've got a plugin called Lifter LMS Blocks. Uh, I haven't released anything of it publicly. Hopefully we'll have a, a kind of beta version that we can, we'll put up on our website. Um, for free in the next couple of weeks. Um, we work with Gutenberg right now. There's a couple issues here and there um, with the way some of our meta boxes work, but um, I'm working on getting all those things resolved. But uh, if you, anyway, if you, if you just search Lifter LMS blocks on Google, um, you can install the, our Gutenberg compatibility plugin right now. Um, hopefully before 5.0 release, that'll be rolled into the Lifter LMS core. Um, but we're, we're working on it. Um, what, I mean, what you're seeing right now is, um, is that Lifter LMS blocks plugin working with the Gutenberg plugin. Um, and you know, there's a couple of issues here and there, but we're, we're working on it. Awesome. If you, if you do want to check it out, um, feedback is very much appreciated. Um, so if, if you're, if this matters to you, um, and I, and I believe it should, uh, and you have a, a site where you can kind of install this and play around with it, um, please do. And then let us know what you think, what we're missing, what we're not thinking about, like, like Jonathan brought up, like what, what's not working with relation to gravity forms, that kind of stuff. Um, we are a small team, a very, very small team with a very ambitious product. We need feedback from the community. Um, cause I cannot think of everything by myself. Um, Chris helps, but he misses things too. Um, we miss things all the time. So if you're, if you're actively working on this kind of stuff and you see something that we haven't caught yet, please let us know. Yeah, good points. So like I was saying, this is a process, not an event. Um, so what you're looking at, it's likely that this release is still a couple months out coming in January, but we're already, you know, forging ahead. So this will, uh, this will continue to evolve as we go through that time period. Um, we had a question about themes. Um, themes do need to also look at Gutenberg. Um, the other day I was playing around with the, the Astra theme in Gutenberg and um, you know, I'd keep an eye on those guys. It's a very popular theme in the Lifter LMS community and um, I haven't followed it closely, but I'm sure they probably already have some content blogs or videos about what their approach to Gutenberg is, or maybe even some demos. So I'd encourage you to install the free Astro theme and check that out. Or whatever. Astro, Astro works fine with Gutenberg. Um, yeah. I've, been, I've been kind of playing around with it. Um, and Ocean WP. Um, I see Bill's asking about Launchpad. Launchpad works with Gutenberg. Um, Theme, themes in general, the, 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 the themes that are more feature rich, um, we'll take Divi as an example, I, I imagine are going to be a little bit more complicated to integrate directly with Gutenberg. Um, but most themes that just have a couple like layout settings, like Astra has sidebar, header settings, things like that. It's going to work pretty well out of the box um, without much, much issue. But tr try your theme out, see, see what happens. And, um, you know, I think you'll be good. Yeah. Um, and just a general note about like people are saying about Gutenberg, how that's going to affect themes. Um, if you look at what's happened with page builders and themes, um, the, the Beaver Builder, the Elementor, the uh, Divi Builder and stuff, uh, the function as page builders have evolved, the requirements of the theme have gotten less and less. So that's one of the reasons why I think Astro is so popular. It's kind of a minimal theme focused on speed with some key integrations like it's integration with Lifter. And if you want fancy layout to use the page builder to do that, but you could also use Astra and without a page builder and Gutenberg in the future to build, you know, your custom layouts and create columns and things of that nature. Um, I'm just going to scan the chat because um, some of you have been typing in there, not the Q and a Jonathan is recommending local by flywheel for testing. Um, I'll just throw out there, WP Engine has staging, um, SiteGround has staging, GoDaddy's uh, um, managed WordPress has staging. 
Um, Kinsta has staging. Um, take your pick. Dream, Dreamhost is mad, managed WordPress has staging. So a lot of a lot of good hosts have staging now. If your business is built on top of WordPress, like it's not just a brochure site, it's a web application, like an online school or training platform, you should definitely have a staging environment. And um, if you don't, sorry, I'm, I, yeah. I love staging, right? If you, if you don't have a host that does have staging, but you have access to a cPanel or to a file manager of some kind, you can also set up a staging site there really easily. There, there's, um, in, Kathy posted it before, but there's a, the, our staging documentation shows you how to do that if your host doesn't have a one-click staging site. Uh, it's pretty easy. So Michelle asks, does the lesson page do the same as the course page? Not yet. The lesson has a couple of elements in it. It's not as complicated as the, uh, you know, or it doesn't have as many options as the course page. Let me get really excited for a second. So one of the things that's so cool about this is that it, it really adds a tremendous amount of custom, customization um, with very, very low overhead. Um, so right now, we, we, we have a plugin that adds a bunch of stuff before and after content. So an example of that is, what, like we look at at the course page, there's the syllabus, the pricing table, course information like categories, tags, et cetera. Um, we have to make some general assumptions that most people are going to want that, but not everybody wants that. We're wrong maybe 40% of the time that default layout doesn't matter or doesn't, isn't right for most people. Um, if you look at a lesson, there's like a back to course button uh, link at the top of the page. There's uh, mark complete buttons or the take quiz buttons. There's some navigation stuff at the bottom. Uh, again, we throw all that stuff in um, and we do it with code because that's the, the easiest and lightest way, way to do it. If we build an option for every sing, everything, uh, there's a lot of database calls that need to be made. Database calls slow your website down. Uh, but Gutenberg gives us the opportunity to, and, and if you want to use a page builder, you need to remove all that stuff and put it all back in yourself. So with Gutenberg, we can now create, create our default template, which you saw when create, Chris loaded up that new course. Um, and then you can modify that to your heart's content. You can delete whatever you don't want and you can move it around. Uh, you can modify the visibility. Um, so what, what you'll be seeing with Lifter LMS, and this is a preview, this isn't 100% finished yet, but on the lesson pages, you'll still be able to use Gutenberg and you'll just have a different set of blocks in your default template um, with that link at the top, the navigation on the bottom, the mark complete at the bottom. Uh, and you can kind of move stuff around, you can modify it to whatever you want. Um, so right now you can do all that, but you need a couple extra plugins to do it. Um, and if you're already using those couple other, other plugins, maybe you don't care and maybe this isn't exciting to you, but it is exciting to me. Um, and it's also exciting because like Chris said, you know, there's, there's so many plugins and I, I see so many websites and I get into sites where there's 60 plugins installed, uh, essentially because we're trying to solve problems that we, we need to solve. You know, people want, you, you need to be able to customize your site that way. Um, so we can kind of reduce the number of plugins we need, um, add customization without adding thousands of extra options. So with thousands is an exaggeration, but we're probably looking at a dozen or so extra options in order to create that customizable. Plus it's all natively drag and drop. Um, you know, for Lifter LMS to provide you all that customization without another plugin, we need to build a page builder. We're not going to build a page builder into Lifter LMS. So we kind of just got one for free and it doesn't have all of the features of Beaver Builder or Elementor or Divi. Um, but this is version one, you know, so anyway, yeah, you, you're going to be able to customize your lessons, um, and, and so on and so forth. And, and I'm really excited about it because yeah. I think it's going to make everybody's life a lot easier, um, out of the box, you know, and as you level up, maybe you need to go to a page builder anyway. Um, but for starters, this is pretty cool. Yeah. So you can focus on the change or, or just focus on the opportunity here. I mean, there is a, it is really exciting what, what's coming here. Um, Derek asks, he says, I've got Gutenberg activated on my staging site, but it's not showing what to change. Um, so with the Gutenberg plugin, um, it, it gives you the option to, uh, use the classic editor, um, or enable Gutenberg on a, on a post by post basis or a course by course basis. You may have just accidentally chosen to use the classic editor. Um, off the top of my head, I don't exactly remember how it works. But when you when you look at add new, there's like a little drop down next to it. So if you're on like the courses list, it says add new. There's a little drop down. Um, if you're already in a post and it's not showing Gutenberg, but it's just showing the classic editor, I'm not entirely positive. He found it. He, I, okay. I saw another message. You can okay, switch great. back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Jonathan says that he's tested Lifter LMS and Gutenberg and Elementor with no real problems. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Jonathan's doing a happy dance. Um, I see somebody raised their hand. We'll get to that in a second. We're almost through the chat questions. Um, Jonathan says a great and strong team and everything works well together. Awesome. Thank you. So if you have more questions coming in, I can see some more in the uh, Q and a box, which we'll get to, but we've got somebody with a hand up. So we're going to go there. If you would like to talk live, raise your hand. If you're over in Facebook, we're going to be checking the, the uh, comments over there. So if you have questions over there, drop a question or um, go ahead and click on the link above or below this video and you can get to uh, light right inside of this live zoom webinar if you're watching it live so I'm gonna bring you up Jonathan what's up Jonathan hey can you hear me yep so um, about the Gutenberg and Elementor one thing that I've really enjoyed with it is Start your page with uh, Gutenberg and you can get actually 85% of the way there. And if there's some like cool feature that Elementor has, just build it in a section template and then you can pull it in just that one section right there. And then, so the added features that you guys are adding with these widgets and stuff like that, um, cause it's kind of a pain inside Elementor to pull in your short codes and drop them where you want them and get exactly the style you want. Cause you're, you're dependent on the short code of a uh, lifter LMS, but this way you can kind of style it exactly how you want and then pull in the page builder aspects as you see fit. So it kind of makes things a little, uh, you get the best of both worlds. So that's what I've noticed. And it, it, it kind of, it, it, it actually really works. So. Well, somebody should make a course on that. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> the problem is it changes too fast. <laughs> you know? That's the problem with tech or the challenge with technology courses is it changes a lot. Um, I did notice, by the way, um, there's a website called WP101. Uh, it's a site by Sean Hesketh that has um, general WordPress training. It's actually powered by Lyft LMS. They have a, there's a guy, Joe Casabona, who has a full course with Zach Gordon, I believe, on Gutenberg. So if you really want to take a deep dive, that's a good place to go. Um, that out there. And it's not, it's not scary. Like, I, there's too much, like, I love, like, like Thomas said, fear mongering out there. It's not going to break your site. I've had nothing break. I've had some stuff not work, but you just have to look into it, and it's usually not, um, that big a deal if you just have to you just have to understand what what the plugins are actually doing so yeah that's awesome i appreciate that jonathan does anybody else want to raise your hand and chat live any questions and uh while i'm waiting for see if we have any more hands bill asks when do you guys sleep and i would say the reality is is we actually sleep pretty well um so uh, if you're in this world, it's easy. The internet is always on or whatever. So it's important to build, you know, strong habits and, you know, separation and boundaries and stuff. Thomas and I have been working remotely on the internet with a global business for a long time. So we've kind of figured out that piece. Otherwise you burn out and go down in a blaze of glory. And that's not, that's, that doesn't help anybody. Yeah. I, I think there's, there's, there's always this idea that um, I need to get it done right now. And, uh, I, it's taken me, I, I mean, I still struggle. Everybody's always struggling all the time, but um, I've realized that, that, you know, whatever emergency issue, there's always three or 4,000 emergency issues going on. Um, and if I, if I try to tackle them all right now with no sleep, um, you know, there, there's only going to be more issues. And I, I've learned that when I try to fix issues really quickly, I end up creating new issues. Um, and then there's more issues. And when I try to work on fixing issues when I'm exhausted, uh, I create even more new issues. So I just try to remember that um, if, if I want to create the, like write the best code and the best support responses possible, um, you know, you, you need to be well rested. So I don't know, something I, I try to remember is that it, like I, I, I'm not in this to, to, for just today. You know, this is, this is my job, this is my career. Uh, this is the next 20 years of my life, maybe. So um, there's always gonna be more issues. And 
I don't know. I try to reduce the number of new issues I cause by sleeping well. So I don't know. Excellent point. And I just checked the uh, Facebook comments for the people watching over there. We've got a, a clap from uh, Ragava. Thank you for the clap. And uh, if anybody, if you're watching this later on Facebook, still feel free to um, drop a comment. We'll be checking in on it. And uh, over there, if, if uh, <clears throat> I'm going to just say a, a few final things, if nobody else has any more questions, if you do raise your hand, talk and we'll chat live. You know, J Jonathan, Chris, if I could, Jonathan just said something about short codes. Um, and yeah. I, I won't, I won't do my little short code rant, but um, I don't like yeah. short codes. And if, and if you're a huge fan of short codes, it's because short codes solve a problem that WordPress hasn't like WordPress as a whole um, and therefore plugins and themes haven't really been able to figure out how to solve. Um, and Gutenberg is a step in that direction. If you think about a block as a replacement for a short code um, and we've got dozens of short codes and there are, 50 or so other short codes that I get emails about every day. That's like, why isn't there a short code for this? Why isn't there a short code for that? There's so many things that there could be a short code for. Um, short, short, short code, sorry. Um, so we're going to be replacing a lot of short codes with blocks. And a lot of the things that we're talking about or that we could do, um, we're going to be able to do with blocks um, and, and this layout customization and things like that. And it's, it's really cool because you, you're, you're not using a system. We're not using a system like WordPress because we want to write code. Um, I want to write code and developers want to write code, but short codes are like a weird form of code. Um, and uh, I think all this makes kind of like a visual version of that. Um, it's, it's really cool. So, um, and I think it makes a lot more sense to have these. Uh, I, I, it just bums me out when, I mean, like Jonathan just said, like it's really hard to like put short codes into modules and to design your layout and uh, you know, all that stuff. But with blocks, I think in blocks and widgets and what page builders have done with their modules or whatever they call them um, is what we want. It's a visual solution. Um, so I don't know. I think that's gonna be really cool and that's what we're working towards. And um, I, I'm excited for the day where we can kind of forget about short codes altogether, so. Onwards. Yeah. So, so Robert asks, when might I watch this webinar again? So, We'll put a link in the chat. There is a, uh, there's a webinars replay page. It's, it won't be up instantly after this call, but it will be there live forever for you to go back and watch. You can also see it in the Lift LMS Facebook group where we've streamed it live and it will show up as a replay. We'll also put it on YouTube. So there'll be a lot of different places you can find it. <laughs> um, uh, so, ch so check all that out. Um, and just kind of in closing, uh, one of the things that makes Lifter LMS great is the community. It's the thing that makes WordPress great and makes it so powerful and extendable. It, it makes it what it is. Uh, so if you'd like to get more involved in the Lifter LMS community, come join the Facebook group, come join the Slack channel. And uh, we have a product called Lifter LMS Office Hours Mastermind. That's part of the Infinity Bundle, or you can get it by itself. Uh, most people who decide to get it do get it via the infinity bundle, but that's where we do weekly calls. Um, if you like this kind of call, um, you would probably like the weekly Lifter LMS Office Hours Mastermind. Um, and that's where we do some live support, but mostly get into strategy, technical issues of like, which, what should I use for, you know, product recommendations in terms of hosting, people share their experience. It's not just me being a guru, there's a lot of wisdom in the community. Um, Jonathan, who's on this call, is a regular in there. Lots of great discussions. I'm sure we'll be having more discussions around Gutenberg and just optimizing for the transition and also taking advantage of the new tools. So that's a great way to connect if you want to um, just be more involved in the Electro LMS community. If you have any further questions about any of this, um, you can send us an email at team at lifterlms.com. That's T-E-A-M at lifterlms.com. I'd like to announce the winner of our $99 giveaway. So um, that is, so you can use it on a, one of the add-ons or if you want something more expensive than $99, um, we'll set you up with a coupon so that you can use it against something else. If you already have something, from Lifter, we can apply that value and just extend your license out into the future with more time. So Derek Southern, congratulations. 
you won the $99 Lift Rail MS giveaway. So congratulations to Derek. Get in touch with us at team at liftrailms.com and we'll hook you up with your winnings. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming and uh, having a conversation here around Gutenberg. As things become more, you know, as they evolve and become more permanent, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll help get the word out of like the new release date for Gutenberg that we're hearing from Automatic and the WordPress core team. Um, Thomas, thanks for coming on the show or the webinar. It's always, always fun. Kathy, thanks for helping keep the wheels on the bus. And thank you all for coming and uh, joining us on this call.